No mai, haere mai, welcome, and warm Pacific greetings. I'm Kate, and in this video we're going to kōrero about how to work with your doctor or health provider to help them best support you to manage your long COVID symptoms. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, doctors and healthcare providers have had to understand a new virus and its post-viral condition on a scale they never experienced before and adapt to new processes and protocols as a result. This has caused challenges for both healthcare providers and patients with long COVID. The good news is that we can draw from experience, diagnostic information and research into other post-viral conditions such as ME-CFS and use this knowledge for long COVID. I know what I've been told, and most of what I've been told is, you know, we're sorry, we can't do anything for you. We don't know how to manage this. But there's more and more validation that it is a real thing. There is also a great deal of new research being done on long COVID, both in Aotearoa, New Zealand and internationally. Initially, very little was done. And now there's, I think at last count, there's been over 10,000 scientific publications on the, at least not so much just long COVID, but the impacts of infection. Throughout this video series, we have guided you through a number of ways to manage your symptoms and improve your quality of life. While some of these things you can do yourself at home, much of your treatment will need to be supported by your doctor, health provider, or a specialist in relation to the specific symptoms you have. As a starting point, you may need to talk with your doctor or health provider about a long COVID diagnosis. Early diagnosis is an essential part of your journey, as this will allow you and your healthcare providers to manage and interpret your symptoms, organise any tests, and discuss management options. For example, you may need some medication to help treat symptoms, advice on which supplements to use, or a referral to a cardiorespiratory physio, specialist doctor, osteopath, naturopath, dietitian, or nutritionist. If you go to your doctor or health provider and they don't understand long COVID, how to diagnose it or treat it, ask them if they're willing to find out information for you or can refer you to somebody who does know more. I mean, obviously finding a clinician who at least affirms the illness. In the very first um, appointment, she said, it looks like you've got long COVID. And then she diagnosed me in the second visit and was all confirmed by the cardiologist. There's a great range of information for medical professionals on the ME Support website. Click on the link in this video's description. Doctors and health providers also have access to clinical support on long COVID through the regional health pathways. This provides guidance for them on what health and practical support is available through the local health system. If your doctor or health provider is then unable to diagnose or help you, we recommend seeking another opinion. You can reach out to others in the long COVID or ME-CFS community, as any doctor who has experience with ME-CFS and other post-viral illnesses will also be able to help you with long COVID. Uh, my advice to somebody if they are going through something similar where their doctor is um, not being responsive to you know their long COVID issues is you know you really need to make a change. Um, I know it's hard, particularly if you've been with your doctor for a long time like I had. Um, also, it, it's hard to know where to go, but. Um, even if you need to get an advocate or somebody to um, go and help you. Take a support person to your appointment. This can be a whānau member, friend, or someone from a professional advocacy service. Having someone else there to help take notes and advocate on your behalf can be extremely beneficial. 
If you have brain fog and fatigue, it can be difficult to remember the information you need to share and what you're being told, especially when doctor's appointments are often only short 15 minute sessions. Some MECFS support organisations offer advocacy services in their region and they may be able to help you with your appointments. The Nationwide Health and Disability Advocacy Service has advocates in most areas of New Zealand. They can provide support if you face any challenges in your treatment or care from medical professionals. They can also help with advice, information and support you in making a complaint if needed. There's further information on advocacy in video 13. In addition to finding the right doctor and having an advocate, we have five key tips for you. Tip one, keep track of your symptoms. Your health provider may not always see you when you're experiencing symptoms or may not be able to see your symptoms, so it's important to have a record of these to show them. Keep track of your symptoms, how bad they are, and the triggers, as well as your day-to-day -day activity. Not only is this useful for your health provider, it will also help you understand and manage the condition better. It'll help you learn what triggers your symptoms and what helps them over time. I think when people come to see health professionals or people um, that know about long COVID or any condition for that matter, what they could do to help would be to have a bit of a symptom log. So looking at what symptoms you're actually experiencing and perhaps if you can notice any sorts of trends in these. So is there a certain time of day that they're happening or that they're worse, a certain time of the week um, or even just following certain activities that can be really helpful. I even I have a diary and I write in it what my symptoms are every day and, and what's happening. I've um, written lists when I've been to interact with somebody I thought might have more information than I have. The best way for me to keep track of what's working for me is I have, my physio has asked me to write down like a daily tracker thing um, because he needs to know himself because um, I don't have the exact same acupuncture each time so every time I go in the picture of my tongue first and then um, he asks me questions about how my breathing has been what my sleep pattern's been like so I have to note those sorts of things down so he's uh, fully aware of where I'm at at the time and um, you know, other things that when I'm at home, if I try something different, I'll write it down and go, oh yeah, that worked for a little bit. Um, yeah, it's a funny thing. I've got papers everywhere, stuck on the fridge. It's, it's for my purpose. It gives me a gauge on how I'm progressing as well, which is a lot better than it was before. When I was diagnosed with ME-CFS, there was so much going on at first, we didn't realise I had an underlying genetic condition which had made the ME-CFS worse. What helped my doctor realise this was when I took in an A3 sheet of paper with a timeline of all the previously unexplainable medical things that had happened to me over the past 20 years. If your doctor doesn't have a clear picture of your medical history, and you have unexplained symptoms in the past, summarising these could be helpful for them. Tip two, take notes during your appointments. It can be helpful to reflect back on these at a later date or before any follow-up appointments. You can either write notes during the appointment, ask a support person to take notes, or request permission to record the appointment on your phone. Tip three, book phone or video consultations. If you're experiencing symptoms that make it difficult to leave the house, or know that a trip to the health provider will make your symptoms worse, request a phone or video consultation. Most health providers offer this option now. I think the other thing is acknowledging that if you are really fatigued or tired, talking to whoever you're seeing about how long you feel you could last in that appointment could be really important and that might be that we could break down the appointment into different stages or we could send you some 
of the questionnaires or some of the questions beforehand so that you can send them back to us to have less time in a waiting room or in a clinic and even options like uh, virtual appointments or phone call appointments. Tip four, book a double appointment. Usually doctors have standard 15 minute consultations. Given the complexity of long COVID, this may not be enough time to communicate all your symptoms, concerns and needs. Booking a 30 minute appointment can ensure that you have the time to discuss all of your symptoms and options for treatment. It is an additional cost, however it can be a worthwhile investment as it will help them see the bigger picture of what's going on for you. Tip 5. Be proactive and request regular checkups. You may find that over time you develop new symptoms or that your current symptoms change, especially as you implement some of the strategies we talk about in this kitty. For this reason, maintain regular appointments as this helps your doctor understand your situation, assess new symptoms or any changes and discuss tests. It will also help you track your progress and manage your condition better. Tip 6. Build good relationships with your health providers. This can help them fully understand your needs and symptoms. You know your body, so trust your knowledge of your symptoms and tell them everything that's going on. Remember, many symptoms aren't easy for others to see. If you need regular medical appointments, you may qualify for subsidised doctor's visits. These are through a chronic conditions pathway called Care Plus through Te Whatu Ora, Health NZ. Care Plus provides subsidised doctor visits for people with chronic conditions who require more time for medical consultations and coordination of care. Your doctor will need to complete some paperwork and while long COVID or MECFS are not listed as chronic conditions in this information, some people with these conditions have received this support, so it's worth applying for. Talk with your doctor or health provider about the new free Health Improvement Practitioners, HIPs. These are based at some medical clinics. As part of a new 2022 Government Healthcare Initiative to provide funding for COVID, HIPs can work with you to support your mental health goals or deal with mental distress that you may be experiencing. The new healthcare initiative for long COVID is in its early days, so hopefully means even more resources and support for people living with long COVID in the future. Finally, it's also important to understand what your rights are for health treatment in New Zealand. When you use a health service, you have the protection of the Code of Health and Disability Rights. You have the right to be treated with respect, free from discrimination, coercion, harassment and exploitation. You have the right to dignity and independence. And you have the right to services of an appropriate standard with the right to appropriate communication while being fully informed so that you can make informed choices. You also have the right to support, meaning you can take a support person, whānau member, friend or advocate with you to any appointments as we mentioned earlier. If you feel that any of these rights have not been upheld, you have the right to make a complaint. The Nationwide Health and Disability Service provides free confidential advice and support in working through your options for making a complaint. For more information on your rights, including copy in Te Rao Māori, check out the information via the link in the video description. In summary, diagnosis and seeking medical advice is important for any post-viral condition such as long COVID or MECFS. Take a support person with you to your appointments. If your doctor or health provider can't help, look for another with experience in long COVID or MECFS. Consider our five tips and use the symptom list and tracking templates we have available with video too to help your doctor or health provider fully understand your condition. Also check out the additional services and support that could be available through HIPs or the Care Plus pathway. Nā mihi and thank you for watching. 
do get in touch if you have any questions and if you found this video helpful, please share it.